Number 10, Eyes That Follow. Has anyone else had this experience playing Bendy in the ink machine? I was playing one time and I swear the eyes on the cardboard cutouts of Bendy were moving and were following me. At first I thought this was just something weird that happened in game, until I noticed that when I got up to get a drink, the eyes continued to move and follow me, myself, not just the character in game, as I moved around my living room. I instantly became freaked out, especially as I had no VR equipment hooked up and not even my camera plugged in. So how could it have known where I was? I became too creeped out and haven't gone back since. So if this is just a weird game feature with tech that I don't understand, please let me know. Number 9, one with the ink. I sit on the page staring outward. Does anyone know that in creating this drawing I trapped myself? That I'm forever stuck on this single otherwise blank page of paper. I didn't know about the ink. I didn't know that it would keep me trapped here. I cannot get off the page, but I can draw more. Is that what he wanted? A tethered artist unable to escape, only able to work endlessly forever? And what will happen when the page is full? Number 8, You Little Devil You. There is a famous animation studio that I used to work for. I can't say their name here because, well, I don't want to get sued, but I will say that you probably know them and they are beloved the world over. What you don't know about them is the characters and animations that they were never able to release to the public. There were works created by the studio for a line of cartoons that were intended originally for adults, but ended up being abandoned. Some say it's because they simply wanted to keep their market family friendly, but I know the truth. It's really because the people who worked on them back in the day were part of a cult, and hidden within the animations was subliminal messaging, meant to brainwash whoever watched it into joining them and becoming a sacrifice to the dark deities they worshipped. Two people at the studio died as a result of seeing these cartoons, and after that they were locked away forever, never to be seen again. I almost experienced this coercion myself when I stumbled upon a little clip of an animation featuring a catchy song called You Little Devil You where a little devil with pointed ears shaped like horns dances around almost hypnotically. Number 7, Fresh Ink. On her days off from school when her dad still had to work, Joanne would come with him. She loved coming to the studio. It always smelled like fresh ink and happiness there. Everyone smiled and she got to play with all the bendy toys while her father worked. Joanne said hi to everyone then decided to do some exploring before heading to their room filled with bendy merchandise and toys where she'd usually play. However, as she wandered, she noticed bendy at the end of the hall, or a bendy cutout at least, waving her over to come play. She rubbed her eyes. She couldn't believe it. Was this really happening? She ran after Bendy down and down deeper into the studio until she ended up in a dim lit corridor. She couldn't see Bendy anymore and when she went back to try and find her way out she noticed every doorway was boarded up. She screamed for help but the loud ink machine drowned out her screams. When the room was entered years later the new owner of the building would notice a painting on the wall with a little girl dancing hand in hand with Bendy. The girl looked just like the one in the paper who had been reported missing years before. Number 6, Beside You. My friend Scott was playing Bendy in the ink machine and he complained about something really weird. Something I can hardly believe happened. I mean, I wouldn't believe it if he didn't manage to record it happening. While he was playing there was a voice that he heard whispering in the background. He wasn't on discord with anyone and at first he just thought it was part of the game until the voice started calling his name. It got really weird when he heard it coming from one specific side of his headphones. But but when he moved around in the game he couldn't find the source of it. He turned his head to look around himself in the room, looking towards the side the voice was coming from through his headphones. He had the lights off but apparently in the corner of the room he saw a large dark figure. Scott grabbed his phone intending to shine a light on the shadow to see what it was just as it began to charge towards him. But before it reached him he flipped on his flashlight and it seemingly vanished. All the audio from the game was recorded and it sounds pretty disturbing. If you're thinking Scott is just messing with me, he didn't have a mic hooked up as he doesn't currently own a mic for his PC. Number 5, Alive. Joey's shrine was almost complete. He'd built it around a drawing he once found. It had slipped out of some unlucky artist's portfolio as he was running for the train. Joey thought the drawing had promise, style, something unique about it. It was a unique looking character with a mischievous grin. He brought it with him everywhere he went and every 
everywhere he went, he found success. With each new accomplishment, he gazed on the drawing, thinking of it as lucky, and it always seemed to wink back at him. The head of the animation studio, now his shrine to it was almost complete, with the drawing in a gilded frame on the wall of his office. Every now and then, it asked something of him, whispering to him while he whistled and worked away. Today, it only demanded something small in comparison to other prior requests. A sacrifice. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and if you want more creepy pastas lists, who doesn't like more creepy pastas? Be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number four, bath time with Bendy. After a hard day of work, I always enjoy a nice long bath. I work outside doing manual labor and the day had been hot and hard. I had been painting a house and was covered head to toe in paint. As I slept into the warm, soapy water and sunk beneath the surface, I let out an audible sigh. Perfect, I thought. I let my face slip below the surface, submerging myself fully for a moment, but then I noticed with my eyelids shut, the room seemed to get dark suddenly. I resurfaced and went to rub the water and soap from my eyes, opening them, but when I did, it stung badly and I, I couldn't see. The water suddenly felt cold. How long had I been in the tub, I wondered. I stumbled out of the tub, still rubbing my eyes furiously, and went to the wall to flip the light switch, but the wall was covered in something wet cold and slippery. So was the floor, I noticed. Had the bath water somehow flooded the bathroom? But the tap was off. Finally, I was able to open my eyes, though they still stung a bit. I blinked through the wispy darkness to see that the whole room was slick with black ink. Number three, stuck. Do you ever get that sense that you're not alone in a room when you know you are? Like a pair of eyes are following you no matter what, and you can't escape them no matter where you go? I do sometimes. Lately my pipes have been creaking something awful. I called a plumber to take a look, but they aren't supposed to come for another week. I just can't shake the feeling that something is wrong with this place. Whenever I turn off the tap, it's almost like I can still hear it running for a few seconds after I've closed it. What is that sound? Running water? A whisper? Today I decided to put my ear closer to the drain to try and see what it sounded like. Now I can't sleep because of it. All I heard was a little voice, I swear, coming up from the drain pipe. It whispered, I'm stuck. Number two, love requires sacrifice. I stare at the inky reflection in the mirror. It is me and not me. It is a happier version of myself. I know that he will come and welcome me into his loving embrace and I accept him into myself. I smile back at the inky being that blinks and grins. Do you love me? It asks. I do, I respond back, hesitantly. It notices my hesitance. It doesn't like that. It frowns and the mirror begins to crack outwards, shards of it falling to the floor around me. What will you give me? I pick up a sharp mirror shard, squeezing it so tightly it cuts into my flesh. I hold it up to the mirror and then point it toward myself. I take a deep breath and respond with a dark calmness. Everything. The eyes of the reflection shine brightly in the mirror as it begins to laugh with delight. Love requires sacrifice. Number one, hide and seek. Dee had an imaginary friend named Ben who loved to play hide and seek. One day the two of them were playing when Dee noticed that she couldn't find Ben anywhere in her house. A voice from outside seemed to call her. Dee, it seemed to say, come and find me, I'm out here. That was against the rules, Dee knew. But she also acknowledged that her friend, not being entirely real, meant that maybe rules didn't apply to them. Despite what she had been told by her parents, she went out the front door and followed Ben's voice. She could see their curved shape climbing up the drain pipe. Dee shouted, I found you, and followed after them. Before she knew it, she was up on the roof. Ben asked Dee, do you want to play forever? Do you want to become one? And Dee, without thinking, nodded and smiled. Then you have to catch me, Ben said, and he jumped. Dee followed him. They would be together forever and become known as the whimsical character, Bendy, inspiring a child whose imaginary friend they became to one day draw them. Starting us off in at number 10, Sammy's voice. While we never fully get to see Sammy Lawrence in the game, we do hear a whole lot of his voice. Makes sense, considering his main shtick was to write songs. He was the music department director at Joey Drew Studios. Various audio logs can be heard in the game with Sammy's voice in them too. But there's also an easter egg in chapter 3 that contains his voice that's especially creepy 
creepy. If you go to the hallway close to level 11, where the music radio is, there are a bunch of instruments just lying around. If you interact with the instruments in a specific order, you'll hear an audio log play in which Sammy says, We've all been waiting, but now he will set us free. Ugh. In order to hear it, you gotta hit the bass fiddle, then the drum, then the violin, then the piano, and lastly the drum again. Moving on to number 9, the Meatly. Throughout the game, there's a series of hidden rooms that you can find that contain this stick figure. The Meatly. Who's that? Well, the Meatly is actually the lead creator of Bendy and the Ink Machine in real life. He's the founder of the game dev company Kindly Beast, and he's also a comic illustrator and puppeteer. His real name is unknown, he just goes by the Meatly, and he's now online for his stick figure caricature. Anywho, in chapter 1, you'll see the Meatly stick figure at the end of this hallway with a blank stare on its face, and Henry will say, What the hell is that? It continues throughout the other chapters in the game, too, always existing behind this same poster, but only accessible after you've done something specific to trigger it. While it may seem like a really cool Easter egg, when you do find the Meatly in the game initially, his presence can be quite haunting, at least for a moment. And at number 8, the Ink Machine. While the Ink Machine is most prominent in chapter 1, it constantly reappears in the game as an Easter egg, appearing for a split second, being lowered on chains into darkness. Now, in chapter 2, you can see it behind the bars on the right from the hallway in between the ink pool and the ritual room. Then, in chapter 3, you can see it behind the bars on the right from the trailer room. Then, in chapter 4, the Ink Machine appears in the distance in the spiral stairway, but only after you've encountered the flashing hallucination of hands coming from the walls. And if you've never played this game, all of those things might sound bad sh crazy, but hey, it's definitely worth the play. And at number 7, the jump scares. This game has no shortage of jump scares. In chapter 1, Bendy has one particular jump scare that had players freaked out. After you start the task of collecting all the items, there's a door next to Wally Frank's office that you can interact with. Now if you attempt to open it, this will trigger the Bendy jump scare. Take a look guys. Speaking of jump scares, and at number 6, Sammy's jump scare. Bendy isn't the only one delivering unexpected frights. In chapter 2, the old song, if you go to the first place where you encounter Sammy, and stand next to the wall with the Bendy cutout that's right there, you can hear the sound of Sammy talking within the wall. He says, in the morning, you may awake in the morning, you will be dead. Yeah, pretty creepy when you're just standing there and not expecting it. And at number 5, Sammy's shadow. We got some more creepy Sammy Lawrence for you in at this number. Now in chapter 2, after you've unlocked the entrance to the flooded sewers, don't enter them just yet. If you look behind the bars opposite to the entrance, you will see a terrifying sight. It's a shadow of Sammy Lawrence standing in behind the bars. Now, after you retrieve the second valve and leave the sewers, Shadow will completely disappear altogether. And at number four, the whistling. In chapter two, in the part with the ink flooded room, right before Ink Bendy pops up, if you turn around and walk backwards towards the door down the hallway, you'll trigger this particular audio event. While standing next to the door, you'll hear the sound of the ink machine running. And if you wait for about 40 seconds in idle, you'll hear the same whistling that appeared in the chapter 2 and later the chapter 5 trailers for the game. Now remember, you'll need to walk backwards in order to prevent Ink Bendy from popping up. Otherwise, you're not gonna hear this. And at number 3, Screams. There's an organ in the first room to the right in the entrance of the hallway. If you play the keys on the organ, there's a faint moaning scream that can be heard. If you do this 5 times, you'll actually get an achievement called Johnny's Broken Heart. Check it out. On to number two, the projector. This one's my personal favorite. So, in chapter two in the recording studio, every time you play the projector, a bendy cutout will appear on the stage. Now, up to nine of them will populate that stage. And when you go down to the stage and look up to where the projector is afterwards, you'll see them all up there, looking down at you. It's incredibly spooky. And finally, in our number one spot, Wandering Sin. Throughout the game, Bendy and his happy demeanor become more and more haunting. Often you'll notice that whenever you destroy the cardboard cutouts of Bendy and then turn back around, you'll see that the cardboard cutouts have been repaired. They're there, in perfect condition. It's really eerie. But there's an easter egg that takes that to the next step. If you ever glitch or teleport to a normally inaccessible area of the game, you'll see a very creepy looking version of Bendy, specifically the Bendy cardboard cutout. Except, it's got aged stains on it. There's ink leaking from its eyes and mouth, along with a pentagram behind him, suggesting that the cutout is demonically possessed. He'll be holding a sign that reads, Wandering is a terrible sin. <laughs> 